Hello, welcome to Minute Realms. My name's Stuart, and it's time for a little update on my Epic Battles Waterloo project. And I think this is vlog number eight. So I've been chipping away in the background. I've actually been doing quite a lot of Epic Battles commission work, so my day job. Um, so I've been painting these by day, and then painting a little bit in the evening by, by night as well in my free time. Not as much as I'd like, as always, um, and very busy family life at the moment. I um, recently had kids' holidays and things in the UK, and extra bank holidays and things. So it all, all adds up. Um, but I have been chipping away slowly, and I, and I know this is a big, big project for me. Um, and I've kind of come to terms or come to peace with... The fact that the, the, all the people with them, you know, massively growing armies in, in the groups on Facebook and things that I won't always be able to keep pace. And this was always going to be a longer term project for me. But I've been thinking a lot more about the direction in which I'm taking it in terms of the order and what I'm focusing on. Um, and that was, was some of what I've done done this week really so I, as before I'm focusing on the Waterloo side of my project before I work on the peninsula side though some of the, the regiments will be useful in both um, and I've been focusing on getting some complete brigades done um, so I started with the King's German Legion Brigade and that's nearly finished now I've got um, obviously completed units which you've seen they were the first things I ever painted and formed part of the tutorials um, and the, the other units the, uh, are nearly done now but they've just been working on them as part of a large batch um, but as something a little bit different I decided to do a large chunk of my skirmisher stands and that's what I've got before me now. These are the, the only things that are fully complete. And I, I tend to not to like to show work in progress too much in my vlogs. It's nice to show you things when they're complete. Otherwise, the, the videos will get even boring than they, more boring than they possibly are. Um, as you can see, I, I've been basing them four miniatures to a base. Makes them go a little bit further. And I also think it makes them look, look a little bit more like they're in skirmish formation um, when they're spread out like that. But you'll see some, some different things here as well. You'll also see some little square bases, 20 by 20 square bases with, with two guys on. So I've used a mixture of the Warlord Games um, rifles and skirmishing, which, which come on the Highlander sprue. Um, and I've also used some um, 3D prints from MC Miniatures, which we touched on a little bit in the, the last... Um, video and I'm going to talk a little bit more about today because I've been printing some other stuff um, but so I've, I've used a mixture of both for both um, I could have stuck with all of um, MC miniatures maybe for the rifles um, because that again they, they as it stands there's only rifles skirmishing available from them um, or I could have gone the other way around and painted them up as light um, because of the forage caps on the MC miniature sculpts I, I decided to, to um, make sure that those ones are only used as, as rifles but a few of the others made it over so there's a bit of a mix um, I don't think I've mixed it on the stands um, I will put some images up as I'm chatting away here and I'll uh, show you some close-ups in a moment as well um, but what I produced was um, two stands for painted so they can be used as the skirmishing formations for the King's German Legion light troops um, I've got two stands that can be used um, for 95th rifles so they've got green trousers I know they sometimes wore a grey as well but it makes them you know stand out from the others a little bit more and I have done um, the 5th 60th as well just one one stand just for a bit of variety won't be used in my Waterloo project as such not at the moment um, but um, I had a, a stand free so to speak so this will provide a stand each to the two light King's German Legion um, battalions that I have um, painted or very nearly painted for, for my King's German Legion um, brigade um, and these will be for two lots of rifles I thought I'd uh, need more than one um, going forward and there are obviously two rifle regiments at Waterloo so I thought I'd, I'd, I'd pop a couple there as well and you'll also notice some little officer stands and I've, I've done them the same as I do with the, the mounted guy um, I've put the dice frames which hold these little 7 mil dice which I use for, for marking certain things depending on what rule set I'm using and we'll come back to that a more, bit more in the future. Um, the officer and the trumpeter are MC miniatures and uh, again we'll, we'll have a slightly closer look at those in a moment. Um, and then over this side we have the red coats and again this is using those those plastic warlord um, um, miniatures and also some of the MC miniatures riflemen which don't have the forage caps etc as well. And again I've started with 
um, some blue facings here, which primarily will be used for the um, the King's German Legion standard line battalions. When I, if I want to send some out in a dual mixed formation, if I'm playing with black powder, I want to have some skirmishing using other rules. Um, and then I've also looked at what other brigades are going to be painting earlier on, um, and worked out what I need um, for the for, you know for the upcoming brigades that I'm painting. Um, so we're looking at the um, the Eighth Brigade, Kemp's Brigade, um, where my the 79th Cameron Highlanders, which I painted for the tutorial, are in. Um, you've also got the 32nd Cornwall and the 28th North Gloucestershire, and you've also got um, some 95th in there. So I've got some yellow facings. Um, I've also got some white facings um, and some more blue um, and you know they're going to be a bit mix and match I should imagine I can label them up as a particular regiment but um, having a few stands that are fairly flexible to use with any regiment given a particular colour facing will probably do for representing them at this scale on the, on the tabletop um, and the other brigade I'll be will be doing in this sort of first kind of Waterloo project is is the ninth and that'll have the first foot and that's got your other Highland regiments in. And that's one thing I haven't got at the moment is I don't have any Highlanders in skirmishing uh, formation. So I don't know where to go with that. Um, I haven't found any 3D prints um, files yet for that. And I uh, might have to go for minifigs, I imagine. It might be the, the easiest option for those, but I wouldn't mind to do, doing maybe three, four stands of those. But other than that, I've painted um, all of these skirmishing stands that I should need for the first chunk um, of the of the project, which was nice to get it out of the way. And it was something I could chip away at in the little bits of free time I had and actually felt like I was achieving something because there's a little bit less to paint. So I have a, a very quick look at them up, up close. And um, this is using all the same colors that I used in the in the rifles uh, page tutorial. So nothing new there. So. As mentioned, these miniatures are 3D prints um, and the STL files are available on Wargaming 3D through MC Miniatures. And as I said, I'll come back and talk a little bit more uh, about that later in this video. Um, but that was the, the 95th. Um, and here is will be for the, the King's German Legion, so the grey trousers. Um, I'd probably do some at some point um, for the, the 5th, 60th, but the main point with these is using them as regimental commanders. So rather than going with the skirmishing figures, it's to actually use them with the figures in line um, and use them as at the back of the uh, of the unit as a partly to look nice for aesthetic reasons, but also to to use as the as the dice holder, so I can record you know morale casualties that kind of thing. Again, it'll depend on what rule set I'm using, um, but um, I find them a lot of useful focal points, so to speak. Yeah, and here's the first strip. Now these are all uh, Warlord figures and painted for as King's German Legion with the with the grey trousers. Again, more Warlord figures with the red cuffs there to be the the 60th of the Royal American Rifles. And these are MC miniatures. Um, you get the forage caps and things. I think they're pretty good. I, this, this, you know, if I was going to compare the two, I think the heads and things are better on in your Warlord Games ones. The quality, the detail on the packs and things like that is better on Warlord Games. Um, but there are some bits that I, I prefer on the MC miniatures. Um, so it's here or there, really. Um, but at this scale, they, they definitely do the job. And, and, and it's without wanting to buy loads and loads more Highlanders than I need. This is this was just an elegant way of doing it. Obviously, minifigs or something will do the job for you as well, I'm sure, if you don't have access to a 3D printer. And here's the other stand of uh, 95th, which I, I did using the Warlord figure, so a bit of a mix for those. So now on to the, uh, the the red coats, and of course these are using the rifleman figures. They are painting inversions because they've got the correct shackles. There are things that will won't be right um, again at this scale, and because it's just a few skirmishing miniatures, I'm more than happy to use them. Um, so these are, I've got blue cuffs. So in, in the first off, I'll probably be using them as. Um, King's German Legion line regiments when, when I'm using mixed formation or I want to put out a skirmishing screen. Some guys with white facings, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head whether that was for Cornwall maybe, um, with one of the regiments in an aforementioned brigade and um, again same thing just different facings. 
and here we have some with yellow so they can be Gloucestershire um, and these are also Warlord. Um, I did paint my second stand with the uh, yellow facings actually from the MC Miniatures so you can see how they how they compare. You see scale wise they were, you know, the, the identical. And before I go on and show you some more miniatures, um, I just wanted to talk to you about something I've ordered actually, um, and that I will go into more detail once it arrives, um, as probably as a bit of a review. Um, but it's not technically a Warlord Games Epic Battles, so it, it will not fall under that heading, and those of you that only follow that on the channel might have missed it. So I just thought I'd uh, bring your attention to it. So there's a set of rules, I believe, that came out earlier this year um, called Soldiers, Soldiers of Napoleon, and it's by Autorus Games, um, designed by Warwick Kinraid, and I believe he's um he's written quite well i know he's written quite a few other rule sets um the soldiers of god soldiers of rome I think he's written something called firefight as well or at least comes under our taurus games um i think there's something else that's, that's nagging me that that's um historical wise i'm pretty sure it might be it's, got, it's, a, it's an unusual name so i might have got the names mixed up i'm pretty sure he used to work for forge world and write some background and rules for them as well maybe in the early horus heresy books and things like that as well but uh, anyway this, this game, Soldiers of Napoleon, um, just kept appearing in my feed. Um, I know there was a demo game at um, CrackCon 2, um, and which I wanted to see when I missed when I couldn't make it. And it, it just keeps cropping up and I'm hearing good things about it. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll take a look at it. And I watched uh, an interview and a brief chat about the game that War Games Illustrated I've recently put up on their channel um, and read Warwick's blog on it. And, and went to the Grip and Beast website and if you sign up there you can sort of read a, a PDF which is sort of takes you through a turn and how it works um, and it's a, it uses cards um, not, not for your dice rolls and things, dice are used, I know some people really hate cards but it uses I suppose cards that could be used for three things, I think they're activation cards that can be used to give orders um, they can give it a special event and it also gives you an objective or something as well um, and it just looks really really interesting um, the rules are scale agnostic base agnostic as well so you can use any miniatures and it. it's something that appealed and they're really designed to be used at what what they've described as a section of the battle or or sort of division plus um, and it's kind of you are part of a larger battle, but um, this you know the, the section you are, are playing will work on a seven by five or a six by four table, which suits many of us who game at home a lot. Suits me with my six by four table, and then the description of an area of the battle, which doesn't necessarily have to be one complete division. Um, matches exactly what I've been trying to do and build towards in this project, in terms of. Um, looking at a section of the Battle of Waterloo based around the Earl's attack where I've got some sections of some divisions, some some brigades from some divisions, maybe even a regiment from one division but not the complete thing um, and it would work with this rule set, well, at least I think it will, looking at the description um, and it means that you, you, you are essentially a divisional commander um, but other personalities can turn up on the table, um, you can represent other command figures and personalities on the table as well. Um, and I quite, it's all these little tick boxes of things I quite like and looking for in a game. I quite like the, the way the card mechanic won't dominate the game in terms of um, swinging it with, with a random uh, event that completely changes it. Um, but it does make you feel like you're not just pushing miniatures directly at each other at a table. It's, it's an interesting alternative to black powder, I suppose. And it would only be an alternative for black powder is, is definitely gonna be the main game that I'm building these armies towards. Um, but this looks like something that will work really, really nicely for some of the gaming I, I plan to do. I ordered the rules, um, they come with the cards. I've ordered them anyway, and I will do a quick review um, and we'll see. Um, um, what I like about it, it doesn't change what I'm building for my armies at all. The project stays the same. It's primarily a black powder project, but this will, will potentially give me an alternative. So if you haven't seen it before, go and read up on it. If you have seen it, um, be interested to see what your thoughts are. As I said, when the rules arrive, I will do a, a proper video on it. So, so look out for it. And here's a whole printed brigade. Now, those of you who watched the last vlog, vlog seven, I believe it was in vlog seven, um, 
will know that I, I sort of showed off the first few prints I did on my 3D printer, which were all stuff related to epic scale. There are a couple of British mounted officers from the Napoleonic STL files. Um, and then was, there was the original British line um, regiment that I'd printed off from MC Miniatures, which I've been talking about quite a lot. And I didn't really have a use for them. Um, when I first printed them, they were just one of the relevant files for the projects I'm doing, and I, they were you know relatively inexpensive, so I thought they'd print them off anyway, and it'd be a good test of the printer and getting used to them. And that's this this regiment here. Um, so I, I had a little look at, at what sort of gaps I wanted to fill. I noticed that um, that, that MC Miniatures had started to produce some Dutch Belgians. Now you can obviously use the Warlord games. British and French to represent your, your, your Dutch and Belgian troops using painting conversions, which I was more than happy to do. Um, but then when I know, because the British ones printed so well, and I noticed that he was doing um, Dutch troops, I thought, well, this would be perfect for me to maybe do those regiments using 3D prints instead. Um, and that's what I've done. Um, so the, the, the unit of British that I had already works really well for the Belgium line, hence does the, the Warlord Games ones. Um, but then I also needed to cover some, some Dutch Jaegers and the Dutch militia, which have slightly different uniforms. And I'm just gonna pop a little image on the screen again now. And then this is the um, first sort of Netherlands um, Dutch Netherlands, um, Dutch Belgium Netherlands brigade that I'm going to be working on for my Waterloo project, um, and it's the first brigade, and it has the uh, eighth Dutch militia, the seventh Dutch militia, the twenty seventh Dutch Jaegers, the fifth Dutch militia, and the seventh Belgium line. Um, so, as I've already said, this becomes the Belgian line. Um, the Dutch Jaegers um, will be represented. Um, by these guys at the back. Um, and then we have um, these three regiments here, which will be the Dutch militia. Um, so here is the MC Miniatures website. Now it's not really their website. You have to find them through wargaming3d.com, which is uh, kind of a host site really, where lots of designers can, can put up their work. It's mostly mostly STL, uh, STL files, but there are other digital files and things as well. Um, and uh, this is the home. Now I have spoken to Marco via email, I sent him an email, um, just asked a few extra questions. Um, and I'm not gonna go through all of his products because he has absolutely loads. Um, there's a lot of stuff that's in 28 mil there's lots of stuff that's in six mil as well. Um, from what I can gather, from what he's said and what I've heard in other places, that he's converting some of his 28 mil sculpts into um, epic size. You'll see here by these French grenadiers with bear skin. These are new since I last checked the website. Small 15 mil in brackets, um, W epic scale, so Warlord epic scale. And as you, you, you'd have seen from the last video and you've seen from the, the rifleman that they scale, you know, as well as you, you could expect with uh, the Warlord games things. Um, so you have to look out for those ones. Um, now, if you have a 3D printer, a resin 3D printer, then I think they're great if you're going to be printing multiple versions of the files. Um, and you know, you see you've got French line here, 0812, so those slightly earlier style uniforms than what we've got with Warlords. So those people are looking at those expanded ranges. We've got Austrian Grenadiers now being added to so some of the, the ranges and some of the nations that haven't been covered. Um, really interesting. So we've got uh, some epic French artillery there. Um, which looks really interesting as well. So some different gunners, I'm guessing you print your guns smaller, you can obviously rescale all of this anyway. Um, so there's more stuff going up all the time, which I find really, really interesting. Um, so you just gotta look out for the epic bit. So we've got um, um, Warlord epic size Dutch militia. No, no, that was the last thing I printed. Um, and those will make up those um, militia battalions that you saw, the, the, the front three regiments that you saw. Um, so you can see there what you get. So you get um, a zip file with a command strip and you get three centre company strips and a flag staff. And because of the militia, you haven't got flank companies and things, or at least he hasn't sculpted them. Um, but again, at this scale, absolutely perfect. See, on the next page, you see more and more epic things. So there's Russian Jaeger stroke grenadiers, Russian musketeers, um, Austrian line, lots of things being added all the time. 
um, and uh, you know, French with great coats. There are things that are obviously already covered by the the Warlord Games um, releases, um, and you know. I'm not saying these are better, I'm not saying they are um, worse, they're just an alternative and that's something we don't have an awful lot of with Epic Scale because it's non-standard scale. We, we, we know that, that the old style minifigs tend to work quite well and we know that, uh, that you know, alternative armies works and there's a few things here and there but there's no one else out there that I'm aware of that does models in strips. Um, and these are also in strips of five and they match up perfectly on the base. Um, but also those of you that are cutting your bases in half, you know, these are these are ready prepped for you as well. So yes, I know it's 3D printing and um, not everyone is going to be in a place to, to deal with 3D prints, don't have a printer. Um, so there may be some grumbling and shrugging of shoulders because um, it doesn't really provide the, um, the, the kind of the alternative in the same way as it does to someone with a printer. What I'll say is there are places out there who will print for you. I think there's there's um, Green Grey Customs or something in the UK um, and I'm sure there are others in other parts of the world um, that you can you can purchase your files and send your files to them and they will print for you. I don't know about the costs but if you're really really interested in in adding things to your army that Warlord just don't make and you want them enough um, it could be worth checking this out which is what what I've done really again the stuff I've purchased isn't essential warlord cater for it in one way or another whether that's painting and versions using the French and British standard plastics whether that's riflemen that already exist the way they helped it's given me some riflemen officers that I, that I wanted as a little flavor piece it's given me um, more rifles without having to buy more Highlanders and it's just given me a, a different way of representing the, the the Dutch and Belgians in the in, in my army. Now as, you, as I mentioned I did speak to Marco um, via email, asked him a few questions and he, um, he was very kind to, to reply and, and answer and I was asking him generally about what his plans were for the future, which is you know, it's a bit a bit cheeky. Um, it's none of my business, etc. I asked him a few questions. I asked him about the possibility of peninsula things, so Spanish and, and Portuguese, and I know he's looking at it and he, he'd like to do that in in the future. Hopefully, he I mean he's he's mentioned August to me. That's that's not a definite. It's a part time thing for him. It's not his main job. It's, this is a hobby hobby thing for him. Um, but he's he's definitely planning on, on working them and there seem to be new things released every week as well. Um, the last three times I've logged in over the last three weeks has been new units added, um, epic as well as, as normal. Um, I asked about um, British line stroke light in stovepipe shako. Now the um, the Dutch militia have stovepipes and the, the uniform as we know is very close in one way so you could use those anyway but I asked him whether he was planning on doing British anyway. And again, he said, sure, um, all go, also plan for August, I think. And I also asked about sort of some more generic um, officers and generals for all nations. Um, I don't know that's something that quite a few people are interested in. I've got those couple of British ones, but I'd like more. Definitely don't have anything extra for the French at the moment. And he, he's also mentioned that he'd like to do something like that for this, this autumn. Um, um, I did speak to him also about, so on the middle guard um, stroke old guard sprue, we have those interchangeable heads, don't we, with the head and the, and the, the, the top half of the musket. And I, I asked him whether he would, whether he considered making a stovepipe head and um, musket top that would make it easy just to convert the existing um, British warlord line rather than having to print um, whole whole regiments as well. And he hadn't considered that, obviously that's a bit of a weird request, um, but he's, he might look into it, I think. Um, whether we need that, if he's gonna produce peninsula style line anyway, though I really like the warlord sculpts. So there's, there's a big part of me that would just like to swap the heads on those um, and have them to use as peninsula with stovepipe. Either way, it looks like coming down the line there will be um, some British with um, stovepipe shakos in, in the same style as well, which, which would be awesome if they do. Um, but again, for, for the people who wanted to do Russians or, or Austrians, it seems like they're being added in there. And that's two nations we don't have anything for. Um, so that would you know potentially excite a few people. Now, I believe I showed these in the last video. These are the, the Dutch line. 1814 to 1815 sculpt that he does. And as I said, they uh, they scale up pretty well. Now, there is a slight 
um, misprint here um, that I was going to maybe green stuff, but it's, it's a lot easier for me just to reprint that one half a strip um, and replace that. Well, I haven't got around to doing that yet, just mainly because I'm not, not painting these as yet. But as you can see, um, they're, they're detailed enough in my opinion. I think they're pretty good. Uh, I also showed these, I believe, in the last video. So these are these are the British infantry um, that I'm using as the Belgium troops. So in that brigade, I needed one unit of Belgian troops. It would be the 7th Belgium line. And then at the time of recording that last video, these um, weren't up on his, on his page. And I can't even remember whether I mentioned it on the video or not, but I was wondering that if I used the others, what I'd be using for the militia. So all your Dutch militia, because they had the, the stovepipe style hat, which, which Warlord haven't yet covered, I suppose. Um, but other than that, you can use, if you're using Warlord, you can use the, the, the standard British. Um, the same way as I've used for the Jaegers. But because uh, Marco at MC Miniatures has just re released these Dutch militia, um, I pin, you know, bought the file. I think the file was $14, so I think it was about £11, something like that. Um, and the amount of resin I've used to print each unit is, is you know, it's less than 50p. Um, it's, it, it means that I've, I've spent less than £15, probably more like 13 50 14 pounds, and have three regiments of Dutch um, militia. I'm, I'm really, really fond of these, um, and I'm really looking forward to it. So I, and it's quite, quite cool. I'm quite happy that I've got a whole brigade um, using these troops. Anyway, it seems like a big advert for MC Miniatures. It's not my intention at all. I'm just genuinely quite excited that I found something that I can expand upon Warlord's excellent range with. Well, thanks very much for watching um, another vlog. Um, I do ramble on a little bit, but that's what they're designed for. They're designed for me to brain spew a little bit and tell you about what I've been doing with, in, with my own project, really. Um, I, I've got a tendency to ramble anyway, so you'll have to put up with it if you're watching the videos. But hopefully, within all that rambling and me talking about myself and my own hobby, there may be some little bits of, the, of information that's um, useful for you guys, especially if you were looking at alternative miniatures. I know it's a topic of conversation that crops up a lot in the groups um, and if you're not a member already it's worth looking in the video description and finding the link to the World Games Epic Battles Waterloo Stroke Napoleonic um, Facebook group that I set up um, I know Marco does occasionally post in there and answers questions about 3D printing and, and, and of his miniatures and things so I don't know if he'll continue to do that um, but there's definitely a little bit of chatter in there every now and then um, again, you can always find other people in there who have used alternative miniatures and, and 3D printing. So it's well worth checking out the group. It's very active. Um, there's over, we're getting up towards two and a half thousand people now. I think we're heading that way. Um, and, um, and, and again, find me a question, put a question in the comments. And I'll, I'll answer as much as I can. I'm very new to 3D printing if those, those bits interest you. I'm not going to put an offer out there too print loads of people's miniatures for everyone as much as I'd love to. Um, probably a few too many people watch these videos. <laughs> not not that many, but a few too many to offer up my uh, my my poor single printer services to, but as much as I'd love to. Um, but um, as I said, there are people out there. I'm sure it's Grey Green Customs. I will do a bit more research about that. And then when people ask me, I will hopefully be able to, to help you out there. Um, but I haven't used these services, so I don't like to kind of recommend things unless I've used them. But there are printing services out there that if you purchase the files. And a lot of people have got a friend that uh, has a 3D printer and uh, more than happy to um, print some stuff if, if they need be. But anyway, thanks very much for watching. Um, please um, comment below. I'd love to hear what you how you're getting on with your projects, how far you getting along um, what your progress is um, if you've liked the video give us a like if you haven't already subscribed to the channel consider subscribing um, it definitely helps the channel out loads and I'll catch you soon on the next one